The autonomic nervous system is the part of the peripheral nervous system that acts as a control system, functioning largely below the level of consciousness. So it's involuntary, it's, we don't have to think about it. The system affects the heart rate, digestion, the respiratory rate, salivation, perspiration, pupillary dilation, mitruition, urination, and sexual arousal. Most autonomous functions are involuntary, but a number of functions or actions can work alongside some degrees of conscious control. So we have some conscious control over them, such as breathing. We have conscious control over breathing. We can increase it, we can decrease it, we can hold our breath. Swallowing, sexual arousal, and in some cases functions such as the heart rate. But your heart rate too is going to be influenced by your breathing. And it's typically, the autonomic nervous system is typically divided into two subsystems. So you have the parasympathetic nervous system and you have the sympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system promotes a fight or flight response. Corresponds with arousal and energy generation. And inhibits digestion. So this would be part of throughout our evolution survival of the species determined on being able to cope with stress, such as if we were confronted with a wild animal, we had to be able to fight it, to flight it, so our body reacts. It's activating the stress response, the fight or flight response. And on the other hand, we have the parasympathetic nervous system. And this promotes a feeling of rest response, promotes calmness of the nerves, the nerves return to regular function and it enhances digestion. So we have the sympathetic and the parasympathetic. And these researchers found that controlled breathing activates the parasympathetic nervous system, promoting homeostasis for everything to return back to balance and assist recovery and restoration of function and body symptoms or systems disturbed by stress. So the very fact that you're watching your breath and relaxing your breath and slowing your breath activates the parasympathetic nervous system and helps to bring the individual back into normality. These researchers dampening of the sympathetic nervous system, so the fight or flight response, you can dampen it, you can reduce it and promote the parasympathetic nervous system. I've been observed in patients with chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases. This is breath retraining, using breath retraining with the treatment of people with COPD. It's also been observed breath retraining with the treatment of hypertension. And there was a very famous book, it's called The Relaxation Response. It was written back in the 1960s by a Harvard professor, um, Herbert Benson. And he used transcendental meditation as a means of bringing down high blood pressure. And it's very similar to what we do. It's very similar. Bringing the body into relaxation, using a passive approach to help the person calm, calm down. And people were able to recover from their high blood pressure. And it was getting very good results until medication came on the scene. So medication is easier. These researchers, breathing modulation regulates the functions of the autonomic nervous system. Breathing influences sympathico vagal balance and can produce short-term amplification of the parasympathetic activity. So again, watching your breath, feeling your breath, relaxing your breath activates the parasympathetic nervous system. Regular practice of slow controlled breathing has also been shown to increase basal parasympathetic activity and reduce sympathetic activity. So just a number of researchers in the last number of slides showing that you can help people with stress, with anxiety, just by even having them focus on their breath. When breathing frequency is slow to between four and six breaths per minute, Oscillations in blood pressure, heart rate, and autonomic nervous system tend to synchronize. 
So I know we rely on the control pause and we don't necessarily look at the breathing rate, which is correct. But when the control pause is 40 seconds, your breathing rate will tend to be about six breaths per minute. So it ties in. And the higher your control pause, the rate is reducing. So if somebody comes into you with a control pause of 10 seconds, they have 20 breaths, 25 breaths per minute. When somebody comes in with a control pause of 20 seconds, the breath itself, the number of breaths are reducing, maybe 15, 12 to 15 breaths per minute. At 30 seconds CP, you could be talking about 8 to 10 breaths per minute. At 40 seconds CP, you're talking about 6 to 8 breaths per minute. So by increasing the, the control pause, you are in turn bringing down the rate and you're helping with synchronization. So similar to the oscillations in other systems, breathing rhythms can become disturbed in disease or as a result of psychological stress. So we, ta we looked at that earlier on, the effect that one has on the other, and it's that feedback loop there. Unlike other oscillations, breathing can be brought under conscious control and thus provides an avenue for physiological self-regulation. In actual fact, your breathing is probably the only function that can exert such a powerful influence on the rest of your body. Can you think of any other function? It has a far greater impact than diet. Far greater impact than diet. Breathing is highly responsive to and reflects levels of physiological and psychological arousal and metabolic activity. And breath retraining calms both the mind and the body, increases resilience in stressful situations, and dampens levels of psychological and physiological arousal. So you calm the individual down by focusing on the breath. Numerous studies have also shown that conscious control of breathing improves anxiety, depression, and panic disorders. Breathing retraining. Focusing on the breath takes attention from the mind, just reducing negative thought activity. If somebody was to look inside at the mind of the Western person, they would see lots of thoughts every minute, every hour, every day. And some psychologists have estimated that we have about 60,000 thoughts every day. And 95% of them are repetitive and useless. So we think about the same stuff. And that has to have a negative effect. So to take attention out of the mind, you can either place it on the inner body or you can place it on the breath. And if you place it on the breath, you're also placing it on the inner body. So an individual who is a racing mind has a number of options to try and still their mind. They could go down to the pub and they could drink six or seven beers and their mind will calm and quieten. But the next day their mind is racing twice as much. So that's not going to work. Or they could focus on their breath for a few days. And if you were to observe your breath for about two weeks, your mind activity will reduce considerably. But even to bring it into our way of life. We spend many years in education education. We're taught how to think. We're taught how to decipher and to analyze and to break information into tiny pieces. Thinking is good. If you teach an individual how to think, you should also teach an individual how to stop thinking. People say they're in control of their minds. I'm in control of my mind. For how long can you stop thinking? If you can control your mind, you can switch the this on-off switch. You're controlling your mind, switch off your thoughts. How long is it before the next thought comes in? But with practice, you will find that your mind activity reduces and focusing on the breath, even when an individual comes in with asthma or they come in with another, the very fact that you're having them put attention on their breathing and reduce their breathing, because we're looking at it from two effects. We're taking attention out of the mind and we're stilling the mind. Your mind goes quiet when you feel an air shortage. I'm sure you have noticed that. Your mind goes quiet. It's even, it's even more effective than meditation itself. You meditate, the mind runs off. You bring it back. The mind runs off, you bring it back. Great, keep on doing it. But focus on your breath and start reducing your breathing. And you feel breathless. And that will hold your mind. Your mind will absolutely focus on the breath. Breathing retraining increases the sense of control or indirectly decreases tension. So again, beneficial effects. 
focused attention to breathing quietness of regions in the brain. So this is looking at it from another aspect involved with anticipation. So the parts of the brain that are involved with anticipation, planning, worry, breathing retraining helps to quieten down those parts. It synchronizes brain wave activity in ways similar to meditation and regulates dysfunctions in the limbic system, which is responsible for controlling various functions in the body brought about by chronic stress. Slow, gentle, relaxed breathing may signal to the brain that homeostasis is being well maintained. These pleasurable sensations reduce stress by activating pleasure networks in the cortex, limbic system and autonomic nervous system. And there's a huge connection between the body, the breath and the mind. The breath is often referred to as the bridge connector or the channel between the body and the mind because of the interrelationship between emotions, mental processes, patterns of body tension and breathing. The breath functions as an indicator of psychological states, presumably in ways that we may not always have realized.